Hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and today I'm going to bring you something totally different and outside the box for me. Um, <clears throat> even though it's something that that screams me. Um, as you can see, I've got this crazy stiletto heel. Um, one of our girls brought this a pair of these shoes and they were way different it had a pattern on the shoe some shoes that she bought a long time ago and thought she might wear someday because you know these kids feel like they have to wear really really big heels and she's a little shorty like me um, and so this shoe is actually a size four and a half that's how tiny 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 her feet are well she bought them she never wore them you know it's one of those things you buy and you think oh I want to wear those I want to be tall and she never wore them um, so she handed me the shoes and she said here you know if you want to try and sell them whatever you want to do just go ahead and take them and do whatever you want and I said well I think I can come up with something for those so I'll take them and so some of you know that I have um, a little bit of an infatuation with the movie um, Wizard of Oz. It's something I watched over and over and over again as a little girl. And it just was one of those movies that, that just took me to another place. And, and I loved, loved, loved watching it. So every time it came on TV, I was right there at the television watching the movie. And my mom always made sure that I knew when it was coming on so that I could watch it. And so anyway, I decided that part of me said, okay, if Dorothy was born in this era what would her ruby slipper look like so I thought you know what I'm gonna paint one of those shoes red and I'm gonna turn it into a modern day ruby slipper for Dorothy so that's where we're going with this you guys it's gonna be crazy and all of that but I think it's gonna be super duper cool um, so um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I've got some Martha Stewart um, tinsel glitter here that I'm going to be using on this shoe. I pray that I, I think I've got enough in here because the bottle is almost full. So I think I'm okay. Um, and it's a larger bottle. So this is um, Martha Stewart. Um, and this is, uh, again, it's tinsel glitter. And I figured that's the best way I'm going to get the sparkle that I need these shoes to have. So we're going um, we're gonna to get started with that. And before I do that, I am going to read a little inspirational quote that I have here that I thought was really kind of cute. Um, and this is, um, I got it from my friend Flora Crow. Um, she had posted it on her Facebook page, so I, I stole it from there. And it's called Dust If You Must by Rose Milligan. Let me go ahead and read this. It says, Dust If You Must but wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be better to paint a picture or write a letter? Bake a cake or plant a seed? Ponder the difference between want and need. Dust a few must, but there's not much time with rivers to swim and mountains to climb, music to hear and books to read, friends to cherish and life to lead. Dust a few must, but the world's out there with the sun in your eyes and the wind in your hair, a flutter of snow, a shower of rain, this day will not come around again. Dust if you must, but hear, but bear in mind, old age will come and it's not kind. And when you go, and go you must, you yourself will make more dust. Is that awesome, you guys? And I'm going to, here it is on my phone, I'm going to post this on my Facebook page. Um, actually, I should turn it this way. I'm going to post this on my Facebook page for everybody to be able to get a hold of. I just thought this was too cute and clever, and I think it's awesome. And so, I'm going to keep this in my mind um, when I'm thinking all the time about all of the things I have to do um, and the things that 
I need, well, I'm think about the things that I need to do versus want to do. And I think some of those want to do's are going to have to start taking precedence over the need to do's. So um, bear that in mind. And if you want to get a copy of that, I will post it on my Facebook page um, under Refunction Crafts. And you guys can... Um, uh, get your own copy there. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys liked that one because I really, really liked it and I had to share it with you. So, um, okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. And I'm going to ask you all at the beginning of this video, if you will, please, um, would you hit the like uh, button and give me a thumbs up on this video if if you are so inclined to do that at the beginning of the video it would be really great and don't forget at the end of the video to make a comment leave a, leave comments and to um, if you're not a subscriber please um, subscribe to my channel I would greatly appreciate your um, contribution um, to making my channel a success I'm working real hard at making that happen and so each and every one of you is important to me and important to my channel so I would greatly appreciate that if you can um, go on over and and hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so that you'll get notified when I do future videos and let's get started on this I'm super excited you guys this is gonna be a lot of fun one of the things that I'm gonna be using today is I got this um, B7000 from my friend Gail and she said that it's supposed to work pretty much like E6000 um, and she sent me this nice little tube so I'm actually kind of excited to have the little tube of this um, to try and we're gonna see how this works versus E6000 today so thank you Gail I appreciate it and I'm gonna use it today and I'm gonna put that aside right now we're gonna take our Mod Podge and I'm just using the same Mod Podge you can buy uh, the small bottles at the Dollar Tree for a, I think they're a dollar twenty five now um, and I'm using my Lazy Susan here I've got a couple of boxes here I'm gonna show you those are my husband's some of my husband's creations and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cover this shoe in sections with Mod Podge and I'm gonna uh, put this glitter over the top of it and I'm gonna do it over the top of my um, got a fuzz on there I'm gonna do it over the top of my um, paper towels here so that I can hopefully save any droppings because I don't want to end up with not enough glitter on this project so I'm gonna try and be really careful about how I do this and this is a situation where my lazy Susan comes in extremely uh, useful because I can spin this around as I go and I'm not having to touch it um, as I go so I'm not getting Mod Podge all over my hands so we're gonna do one side then I'm gonna step away for a second and put you guys on pause and I will go dry the first side and then I will start uh, with the second side so that's how we're gonna do this okay so I've got my Mod Podge on there and I want to put this aside so that I don't end up with it all over everything if I knock it. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, you know what? I want to put this on the inside of this heel. I'm going to put glitter on the entire shoe. Just so you guys know. I'm, going, I'm even putting it on the bottom of the shoe. Maybe not on the the part that you walk on but the bottom section of the shoe I'll try and put a nice clean line across here um, to define but I do want glitter on the bottom as well because when it's sitting on a shelf or a I'm sorry a stand or what have you um, I think that it will look better okay so let's get busy here I 
this is going to take a lot of glitter so I'm just praying that I'm going to have enough I have a little bit more of this kind of glitter this um, tinsel glitter that my friend Gail had sent me a little tube of it so if I have to I can probably go over to that but there's not a lot of glitter in that tube so I'm hoping I can make this happen with my bottle here thankfully I haven't used a lot of this glitter up already so I have a lot but this is going to take a lot of glitter. And now it's not coming out. And so it's a beautiful Sunday today, you guys. There's a nice little breeze outside, and it's only about 80 degrees outside, so that's nice for California at this time of year because we still usually have hot weather in October up until Halloween. Halloween usually is the day, literally the day that cold weather comes and I bet you dollars to donuts we get rain on Halloween. It happens almost every year. And I need, really need to act fast with this Mod Podge because it does dry very quickly. So I'm trying to work as quickly as I can on this without over pouring and that's almost impossible. I'm trying to find any holes that might be there. But this glitter looks amazing on this. So I think I picked the perfect the perfect one. So I am going to pick this up just so that I can get to the underbelly. And of course I'm getting glitter all over me. This is not easy. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are seeing this and getting a good view of what I'm doing here. I mean, I'm being a little sloppy maybe here, but there's no way to do this neatly. It's impossible. But you can see while I'm off drying this, I'm also going to clean up my mess here and put all of this glitter back in the bottle. It's all over my arms, everywhere. Okay, so I think we got the first side pretty well covered. I'm just gonna shake in a couple of spots here that I can see maybe didn't fill in. And I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of tap this down. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is gonna be the coolest project ever. And different, you guys, I know some of you have probably been saying Carol needs to come up with some new ideas. Well, here it is. And I'm going to try and come up with more new ideas, too. While staying with my, staying true to my shabby chicness, because you guys all know I love my shabby chic, and that will never go away. Um, but I do need to have some other ideas, you know, to work with as well, so... Um, I thought the other shoe like this, I still have one more, maybe I'll do a different kind of a thing. I've seen some uh, 
really nice floral arrangements and things that people have made with these. So um, that's probably what I'll do with the next one, but I won't be covering it with glitter either, so it'll be a little bit less complicated. Just making sure I've got enough on there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let this dry, and then I will take and do the other side. So I'm going to put you guys on pause, and with the power of YouTube, I will be back in just a second. Okay, so um, I went ahead and I uh, glittered up the entire shoe. So as you guys can see, it's completely glittered. Can you believe the sparkle in this thing? Martha Stewart tinsel glitter. Holy moly, that's good stuff. Um, I wanted to use the tinsel glitter because I do find that this glitter tends to have a really great sparkle and the glitter pieces are slightly bigger than the little gritty um, glitter that you get, you know, say even in stickles or what have you. I love stickles. No way I could have covered this whole thing in stickles. I'd have needed, you know, 10, 10 bottles of it. Um, so I really, really like the way that this Martha Stewart glitter did this because as you can see, I mean, this totally looks like it should be Dorothy's modern day ruby red slipper. That's the way I see it anyway. So um, I hope you guys agree. I'm, I cannot tell you guys how excited I am about this project. This is like probably, I'm going to say the most exciting project I've ever done because it's, it's, the movie is so much a part of me and my growing up that it, it has such meaning that I am just thrilled to be doing something like this. Now, I have to sell this slipper <laughs> and that's going to be the hard thing for me because I'm probably not going to want to sell it, but I have to. Um, I can't keep all the things that I make and I do have one more shoe so I mean if for some reason this never sells which I can't imagine that that will happen uh, because I know there are people like me out there that absolutely love this movie I have another shoe that I can do for myself at some point so I'm not gonna worry about that and I think I'm going to go with, because this is ribbon, I think I am going to go with hot glue to put this ribbon on because it's not going to stick quick enough with this B, what is it, B7000. I can tell it stays wet a little too long. So that's not going to work for, at least not for putting the, the ribbon on. So we're going to just hot glue this ribbon around the uh, trim of the shoe. And this is just a sparkle uh, sparkle ribbon that, um, again, it's something that I got in one of my Happy Mail packages. And I love it. I've used it in a couple of things already. And I just love it. It's not a wired ribbon, it's just a, a basic ribbon, and this is about a quarter of an inch. But I think it will trim out the shoe nicely along the edges, so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm trying to do here, is to just kind of trim out the shoe. Even though there's glitter all the way up to that edge, this kind of gives it a more finished look, and I'm trying to be very careful with how I do this, not to get a whole bunch of oozing glue all over the place. Because like I said, this project has a lot of 
I think it has a lot of potential if I do it right. Now that's the question, is Carol going to do it right? And so keeping my fingers crossed and saying a little prayer <laughs> that it comes out the way that I envisioned it. And so far, I am not disappointed one single bit. So I'm super duper excited. And I can only go so far with this glue because I don't want it to get cured before I can press the ribbon down. So I'm not going to do long sections. I'm not exactly sure how long this project is going to take me total in my hours. Um, there may be a lot of editing done to this video so that I can make it watchable for you guys because I honestly I'm not willing to um, rush on it to get it um, to get it done. So I'm just going to take my time and do everything slowly and sort of methodically, if that makes sense to you guys. And I'm sure it does. I started to write a little, um, I want to write a little saying to go with this slipper for when I sell it. And I want to write my own words using a few words from the movie as well. But I want to use some of my own words to put it into sort of another context. Um, which really the, the the movie itself has a has a meaning to it, you know, about family and home and um, and that to me is um, part of the coolness of the movie in my adult years. And when I was a kid, I didn't understand that part of it. I just knew that I loved the characters and I loved Dorothy and and Toto and the Tin Man. Get out of here. He's my favorite character. I just love the Tin Man and I think it's because I can relate to the Tin Man the most. Um, I love the Scarecrow too, but the Tin Man, he's my all-time favorite and I think they made an amazing character out of him. Whoever wrote the story um, did an excellent job of um, the Tin Man character in my in my opinion so okay so now we have a trim going around the edge so what I'm going to do is I want to stuff the shoe and so in order to do that I have some velvet here I wish it was crushed velvet because that would be really awesome but this is just a regular velvet um, fabric and I brought some stuffing this came out of a pillow that I've never used I bought it and didn't like it and it was still stuffed so I have cut that pillow open and I've been using this stuffing for a few little odds and ends um, craft wise so um, I think I want to go ahead and stuff the shoe now so that that part is done and then I can just kind of finish the outside. Here's the thing I'm afraid. I'm afraid to do this and the reason I'm afraid to do it is because 
I've seen a lot of these shoes. Um, I've, I've seen some on Pinterest and what have you that have been altered and turned into flower, um, like vases almost. They put bouquets in them and they're really super pretty, but that's not necessarily what I want to do with this. But my problem is, is if I put this stuffing in here, what am I going to put in that section with that stuffing? And so that's where my, my question lies. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with that part yet. Um, so you guys are going to have to bear with me when it comes to uh, figuring that part out. And as I'm going along, I may figure it out. I have one idea, and I'm hoping that maybe it's a great idea but I won't know until I start working on it. So I'm just gonna start stuffing this pillow fill, polyfill stuff in here. Just like that. And then I wanna get some going up the back side of the shoe. I just hope this turns out the way that I'm envisioning it. I really, really do. I'm super excited. And I need a little bit more because I do want it to kind of puff out a bit once I put that uh, velvet fabric over it. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to cut this sort of to fit inside the shoe. I don't want a lot of extra fabric hanging off of it. So I'm just going to start sort of cutting this down and hoping I get it right. And you guys, I do have glitter everywhere, so I'm sorry that you still have to look at that. I'm not going to really be able to clean up all of that glitter until um, until I get it done, and then I'm going to blow it off, and then if I need to fill in a couple of spots after that, then I can do that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and stay over the top of that filler and tuck it into the shoe just like this and then I'm hoping in doing so I can get it looking nice and straight so that it's not like a wrinkled up old mess up here I've never really done this before so I mean I suppose it would be okay if it was kind of not perfectly straight or 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 smooth because you know how sometimes you do the insides of boxes and things and it's kind of wonky a little bit, kind of wrinkly like that. But in my vision, I really, really, really would like for this to be nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, Lordy, I hope this goes right. I'm going to put some glue right here. And I'm going to tuck that in, and of course the glue is sticking to my fingers. I think I have to pull this down and put my fingers underneath the fabric and try and smooth it that way. And get these oozies out of here. I will be putting something else on the edge of this. So any little bit of glue that, that pops out is not going to hurt anything, really. 
if there's a little bit you know along the the fabric line it's not going to be a problem because like I said I am going to be putting another trim on here so it should be okay and then any uh, maybe of this little cottony stuff that comes out I can get that off of there as well but this is the hard part for me because I'm having to get up behind this velvet to try and stick everything down the way I want it. And then I have to smooth it at the same time and burn my fingers on the hot glue. This turns out. And like I said, you guys may be seeing a little bit of glue ooze out as well, but that's okay because I think I can remedy that fairly easily. <clears throat> And this is where this could get time consuming, just trying to get all of this in here. So here's what I'm going to do, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish <coughs> with this portion of the shoe and then I'm going to bring you back. So I'm just going to go around this whole piece, gluing that fabric to the edges of the shoe. Okay, so I've got the velvet in there and it's not perfect but I figured out that it's okay because up here I just I couldn't work with it easy enough to get it tucked up against that heel but it's okay I've already figured out and there's a little bit of maybe fuzzies there's some of the fuzzies that are sticking out down here but it's okay because I'm going to be using this trim and this trim is going to go around the entire shoe right here. I know I'm covering up that other um, ribbon and I wasn't even thinking about that when I put that other ribbon down that I was putting this on there. But it's going to cover up any of the the either glue or the the stuffing that might be along the edge of the shoe. So we're going to be good there. So I'm going to start um, gluing this on around the edge here and we're going to be very careful not to get glue all over the place on this because I definitely at this point do not want a bunch of glue um, showing up on the velvet. So I'm going to be very 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 careful about how I do this. My problem is, is I've got fuzzies on my glue gun here. I need to wipe those off. And this is laying very nicely on this shoe. This trim here, it's perfect for this shoe because it's just laying, it's laying perfectly. And I'm kind of able to do a longer section with this because it just goes right down. Perfect. 
and it 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 goes along with the shoes uh, the direction of the shoe the curves so it it lays right down so let's get this around here I'm just glad I got that velvet in there I was starting to panic a little bit trying to put it on there whoopsies I'm going off the edge here um, because I thought oh my gosh I'm not going to be able to do this and then I realized that I was still going to have that trim going around the edge of the shoe so it shouldn't be a problem and sure enough I started to kind of test it and it was fine and there will be a few spots where I will have to add glitter you know at the end I'm certain of that because I will probably as I go along um, I will probably knock some of that glitter off in certain patches so and that's okay I can work with that I got um, Gail sent me some where are they some tweezers I want to see if these work for maybe pulling some of these little bits of glue off that are sort of on the edge here. I think they might help. This Lazy Susan, I think I'm going to need to have Jeff make me a larger Lazy Susan. There. Okay, let's just get this the rest of the way on and then I'll piddle with it when I get to the end here. And I'm going to cut the end off. And we'll take this and glue it down. Just like that. And whoopsie and you guys can see right up in here I do still have that bunched up area and that's okay I'm actually kind of glad it's kind of tucked in right there because there will be something in that spot and I'm gonna be building up on it up there so I think it's gonna be just fine um, when it's all said and done so I think we're okay. I do want to look at something I've got over here though. I want to see what kind of fabric flowers I have. I do have one little um, velvet rose, but this velvet, I think it's the same velvet actually, now that I'm looking at that. Yeah, it's the same velvet, but I was thinking, you know, I know I'm going to put flowers on this, but I don't know if I want to use, I don't think I want to go with the velvet, though. I think I want to go with some pretty, I'm going to use some pretty paper flowers because I've got a couple of variations of the reds in these, and I want to mix them in to make them kind of uh, stand out. And then I want to put a piece of bling like somewhere on on the front of this and I don't know which I'm going to use yet I've got a few things to choose from and I've also got this pretty red rose here but I don't know if I'm going to use that or not but I want to stick with look at look at this box that Jeff made me isn't that cute it's out of uh, I think it's white oak or red oak I'm not sure but um, he made me this one and then he also made this one he's gonna be making some to put in the Etsy shop and I was gonna put this in my shop and sell it and he wouldn't let me he said no you can't sell that because he said it wasn't perfect what that's supposed to mean I don't know and I did put a little bit of stain on this because I wanted the blessed to show up more because it didn't uh, I think that was the thing he didn't like. It didn't carve real deep where it says blessed. 
and so he didn't like that. So this is my box, and this is my box, and I just love both of them. So um, this one, I'm going to put something on the top of it, but right now I'm using it to put some bling in because I wanted to pull a bunch of things out that I could possibly use on this shoe and I because I didn't know what I wanted to go with yet so I've got lots of choices that is not blingy enough that is really pretty that's a different kind of a piece we're not going to use blue and then I've got some just uh, clear rhinestone bits too so um, I just have to determine which which bits we're going to use but I did take out, you know, some red stuff because I knew I definitely want some red bling in there. So I will figure out where these pieces are going to go. And that will be kind of pretty up there. Well, we'll see. We've just got to see what we're going to do here. This piece is actually quite gorgeous. And the, the red is just perfect with this. But... I don't know if it has enough, like, je ne sais quoi to put on this. It does. Ah, I don't know. And then we've got this swirly one that actually really looks nice on there. You can see that. Um, so let's just start, let's just start building on this. We're just going to go for it, you guys. I've got to, I've got to figure this out. Oh, I want to show you guys too. I forgot. Jeff brought in, Jeff is making some other boxes and I was going to show you and I had him set it aside. You guys are not going to believe this one. I have to set this out of the way a little bit. Look at this box, you guys. Oh, I'm turning it upside down. Look at this box. Is that not gorgeous? It's made out of cedar and Jeff did this on his CNC machine, so that's the inside of it, and it smells amazing. And so this is what the sides look like. He just kind of car had it, kind of carved it in here and here, and then carved in. That's the blessed is. If I could just figure this out, the blessed is carved into it. Um, on the CNC machine and then what he does is he takes this stuff called aura mask and he covers the whole piece of wood and then he um, carves it out and then he sprays the word black and then when it dries he takes the aura mask off and he's left with a nearly perfect carving of that word so this is blessed um, I love this box. He's doing another one um, now. This one's going in my Etsy store, just so you guys know. Um, he's doing another one. He was thinking about trying to do one and put uh, a verse on the inside of the lid. So he's thinking about that now. He hasn't decided if he's going to do that yet, but he may be coming up with one like that. But this blessed box is going into my Etsy shop. I'm just going to tell you guys, a lot of his stuff is going really, really fast. This time of year, <clears throat> everyone wants to buy things made out of uh, wood. And so his stuff gets real, real popular um, about this time. So uh, just know that this kind of stuff, you know, his boxes generally will go pretty fast during the, the holidays. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in it or you want it, it's probably a good idea to go over and look at it right away and see if it's something you might want to purchase. And plus, you got to remember, I've got that $50. Uh, anybody who spends $50 or more in my shop right now will get into the raffle for my altered Mickey Mouse watch. So you guys need to remember that. You know, if you're looking to get into that raffle, you've only got... Um, Today is the 30th. You got today and tomorrow. And that's it. The the raffle is over and I will be going through my shop and looking at all of the people that uh, made those purchases and um, 
picking out a winner. So if you're interested in getting into that raffle, please make sure you get over to my store either today or tomorrow. Today's Sunday. I'm hoping to get this video up today. If not, um, it won't go up till tomorrow, which is Monday. And the day, the last day will be here. <laughs> so just, just know I'm trying to get ahead for you guys. But um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I want to make a bow. But I want it to be more than one layer. And this is not double-sided ribbon. So I think what I'm going to do, and I don't know how to do this, you guys. So this is somewhere where you're going to say, oh, she should know how to do that. Well, when it comes to making bows, I'm used to working with double-sided ribbon that is easy to work with. So I'm just going to take this. And instead of worrying about how I do this, I'm going to make two, and then I will tie them together. So that will make it easier for me to get a double ribbon. I wished I hadn't used those scissors to cut it with, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to put that one on the bottom and that one on the top. So we're going to have a really sparkly uh, ribbon. And then I'm going to take my thin uh, sparkle ribbon here, my quarter inch or eighth inch. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's 3 16th of an inch here. I'm just going to cut a good sized piece off. I'm going to take this and I've just got two bows here. I'm going to go in between these bows. And this is this thick ribbon here is a wired ribbon. So it's got wire in it. So I can I can make this look however I want because I can uh, manipulate it. So that's a good thing. I don't know how I got that stuffing on the ribbon, but I did. Okay, so let me just, I want to tie this, but I want to make sure I get the right wrinkles on the front side of this bow. There we go. So I'm just tying it tight, and then I'll tie a knot on the back side. And maybe leave that ribbon there too, just in case. In case I like it. <laughs> and then we're just gonna fluff this up because this bow is gonna go at the top of the shoe. So that's why I wasn't so, so worried about um, this little fluff part right here. See, isn't that going to be pretty? So we're going to put that bow, and I am going to cut these long ribbons off. I don't want those there, for sure. And I will save those two pieces of ribbon to use in something else, because I really, really love that um, 3 16 ribbon. It makes the nicest embellishments especially when you're working with tiny things like my foam birds. Oh my goodness, it makes great ribbons for my foam birds. In fact, I have a foam bird here sitting in front of me that I just realized is red and I didn't use that ribbon on it and I'm gonna add a bow to that little bird with my ribbon. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this beautiful bow right up here at the top of the shoe and I'm gonna press it in just like that oh you guys can see it so we're good in fact let me just kind of lay this this way so you can really get a good look at it so that's what that's gonna look like 
Isn't that gorgeous? You guys, this project is just to die for. I am so excited about it. Now, one of the other things that I took out is I took out some of this red, these little red beads, and I was thinking I wanted to go along the inside with a row of this. I'm not positive that it's going to be, and I've also got, I do have my rhinestone. And I'm going to take this off of its spool right now because the spool is just getting in my way. So I've also got this rhinestone chain here. The only thing, the only thing I don't care for with this rhinestone chain is that it has, it's a gold chain and I'm not I'm not huge on gold rhinestone chain. Oh, you know what I do have? Look what I have. This is what I was going to use originally, and I forgot I had it sitting out here for this. I have some sequins, and that is going to be perfect. So I have this piece. Let's see. I don't know that this one will be long enough to go around the whole thing, but I'm going to test it out and see. Got it right here. Actually, it's going to work, so I don't have to dip into my big piece. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's going to be so pretty. Okay, now I have to be so careful with this because I don't want a single smidge of glue to get under this and get on that velvet now. Now is the time when I need to make sure I'm being super precise with my glue. So I will probably be very quiet right now while I'm doing this so that I can make sure I don't make a mess. So forgive me if I stop talking at some point. Oh, this is so fun, you guys. I'm super excited about doing this project. Oh, it flipped. There we go. You know how sometimes sequins, when you get them on a strand and they want to, one section flips the other direction? That's what happened. But I got it. I fixed it. So far, so good. Okay.
There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to fluff up my bow here. Sorry for getting so quiet there, you guys, but I had to concentrate on that one. Okay. So that's what we have so far. And you can see we got the sequins on the center there. Just like that. And we've got our beautiful, beautiful bow. Oh my gosh, this shoe is coming out fabulous. Now I just need to figure out how I want to do my flowers and other embellishments. So first things first, I think I am I'm debating on whether I want to put a jewel up here on this bow or um, maybe one of these roses. No, I don't want to put that rose on there because it's a little bit, it's a little bit haggard. So I'm thinking maybe I don't want to use that one there or anywhere on this. Um, oh, we've got this. This would be really pretty up there. I'm thinking maybe this piece. I think that's really pretty. What do you guys think? I feel like that works. Um, so I'm going to, let me look and make sure that we don't want to go with, nah, it's too. No, I think we are going to go with that piece and it just adds a splash of gold, which is very pretty. And honestly, I think for this, I am going to use my E6000 just because I know my E6000 will hold it on there. So I'm going to use a little bit of this and a little bit of hot glue to get this on there. So I put the E6000 on one side and the hot glue on the other side. And that way the hot glue cures right away and the E6000 has time to dry and set up. Okay, so that's on there. Now let's get to work with some of these flowers and things. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, first I want to put, I want to decide which of these are going to go down here. I really like the way this one looks. I'm going to just rub it out with my shirt just a little bit and make sure it polishes nicely on that center piece. There's nothing worse than putting a piece on there and then having it be all scratched up and stuff. So I don't want that. So I am going to put this, my question is, do I put the flowers down first, sort of like, you know, like this, and that one has glue on it, kind of like this, and then put this in the center, like that. Or do we put that down first and then put the roses on around it? I think we're going to put this down first. And I will use a little bit, again, of my E6000. Because once I get this stuff down, I don't want it to come off. And this is like final decision making here. There can be no changes of, of decisions on this. So, let's just pray that it comes out exactly the way I want it to. Okay. 
Okay, there's that. And just going through my other roses here to make sure I have enough going on. This is a really nice one here. You know what, I think I need to put a little dot more glue up under here on this. I didn't get it up to the edge there, so it looks like it wants to move on me. And I want that to stay down as I'm putting these other things around it. Because these flowers, you all know, are going to get some stickles on them. So, yeah, more sparkle. Okay, we've got that. And I'm going to put that one there. This is the easy part for me, knowing where to put the roses. Okay, and here's another really pretty dark rose. Most of these roses have come from Kiki's sale. These dark crimson roses are ones that I get at a local store. And then the, the brighter red roses come from Kiki's Sale. And uh, the bright red ones are gorgeous roses. Let me show you guys. Um, they really are a cut above. Um, they're just smaller roses, and so I needed bigger roses. Where am I going? There I am. There we go. So they are really pretty. These are the ones I get at Kiki's. And then these are the ones that, that I buy at my local store. So you can see there's a big difference in, in the way that they look. I love these roses here because I love the crimson color of them. But I love these roses because they're always perfect every single time. So. Um, that's why I love Debbie's flowers and I really enjoy getting her packages because the flowers are always just so perfect and beautiful and I know I'm going to get a lot of good use out of them. In fact, when I get my flowers from Kiki's, I'm telling you, I run out of them every month. Every month I run out and I get a lot of roses from Kiki's every month. So... But for me, I mean, I just, I go through them because that's what I do. I use a lot of flowers in my crafting. And so it's, it's just what I do. I want to put some more bling in here too, you guys. I'm not just going to leave it at just that one, that one piece of bling because this is too, too crazy beautiful for just one. So we'll be figuring out what else we're going to put in there. But in the meantime, I'm going to get these flowers down um, and get this part of it figured out. And then I will move on to um, adding some more bling. I'm going to add this little uh, ribbon flower here because it's the dark crimson red. But I don't want to use a big, huge flower right here. So... This is what's going to go in that spot. Okay, that's what we're looking like so far. And hopefully you guys can see this as I'm doing it. I'm trying to see my camera and make sure that I'm doing what I need to do here, but sometimes I can't, it's too small and I just can't see it. So I just have to go on a, on a wing and a prayer and hope you guys can. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Oh my. 
my, that would have been so pretty on there too. I still have some of this trim left and that would have been real pretty on this too. Um, boy, I'm thinking I got another idea, you guys. And here is my trim. This is what I have left of this beautiful trim that my friend Kim sent me. Um, but I'm wondering if I put this along the bottom. Oh my lord, that's pretty. Ugh. But the question is, do I have enough? Because I've got a few pieces here. So maybe, just maybe, I can make this work. So that one's going to go to about there. There. I don't know, this one string might be enough. We're going to go for it, you guys, because I absolutely love this trim. And this is absolutely my... My this is going to be my number one project for 2022. That's what I'm naming it. My number one project for 2022. Because this is something that is so me and so perfect. And I know it's going to come out really, really awesome. So I'm just going to add E6000 along this chain. I'm not even going to put it on the shoe first. I'm going to put it right on the back side of this chain and start putting it on there. I just pray that I can get it to sit there long enough to uh, stick. I have faith in my E6000 to hold the stick once it cures, but it, this chain is a bit heavy, so you can see it's wanting to fall. So let's see if we can put a little bit of hot glue on there and get that to set long enough to let the E6000 do its thing. And I'm going to have to do that over here as well. We'll just have to do it in a few spots. get some of this stuff out of the way here. Get some of these strings of glue off of me. Okay, so here I'm going to I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to put a dot of hot glue right there. Just like that. So you guys can see where I'm going with this. Look how pretty that looks on the edge of the shoe. Holy cow, it's so pretty. Okay, we're going to go around this side and keep our fingers crossed that this will go all the way around. If not, I have more. So, I mean, I know I can make it work, but I'm hoping that I can do this in one 
with this one chain, so to speak. having a hard time pressing it. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up on the other side by pressing from both sides, but I have to find a way to be able to press this down so that it will get in there good enough. Because you have the other thing you have to remember is I'm gluing this down on top of glitter. And that glitter wants to kind of do its own thing too. I didn't quite make it darn I'm like less than an inch away oh that's so frustrating well I hope you guys are still hanging in there and watching this video because it's definitely going to be worth it in the end. So I'm really hoping I'll get a lot of you to hang in there. Do you know that the longer you hang in on these videos too, the better the better that YouTube looks at um, your um, channel? Depends on how long how long I can keep people interested in my videos. I'm sure most of you already know that. Um, but man, it's not easy. You know, for a long time everybody said, oh, no videos more than 10 minutes long. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't do a video in 10 minutes doing what I do. You won't, it, it's, it's, I might as well not even do it. Because then it's not a tutorial, it's just a see what I did kind of thing, and that's not what I'm about. I want to teach people how to do it themselves. So, um, for me, that does not make a lot of sense. And actually, I just realized what I need to do is go around the back side of this, and I should have just kept that on there. Oh, well, that's okay. We are going to go like this, and we're going to figure out how big we need this piece to be. And I think I'm going to go to about right there. We'll cut it off a little long, just in case. Better too long than too short. Especially on something like this, because... It's kind of a make or break, and I can't just leave one little section. I would have to cut it way back to, to cut a bigger section to fit in there if I was too short. So even if it was just like one little line, it doesn't matter. I would have to, I would have to really um, do a whole, uh, a section of several, several links. Okay, so now if I can just, and I did it anyway, doggone. Well, you guys, this did not fare too well. Let's see if we can try this again. I'm going to try it with this piece here. And this time I'm not going to cut it off until I get it on there.
The hard part I'm finding on this is the direction that I have to go on this shoe is not easy to follow because it goes it's kind of sideways and then up and then it's like directionally it's not the way that my hands are feeling real comfortable in doing it. I'm going to cut you right there and hope that I did it right. Okay, we're just going to lay it over like this. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I've got that on there, but I'm thinking, let's see, that maybe I'll put, I'm going to put one of these clear rhinestone pieces directly on the spots where those two chains meet, and that way I feel like It'll give it a little bit more of a seamless flow, if you will. And it just kind of gives it a little extra design on the side of the shoe. I like it. But it's the only way I can do it to get that seam more seamless look of the rhinestones coming together. So now I'll get one. See, this side almost looks seamless. It, it did really well on this side. But I want to make it match, so we're going to do it on both sides. I have to admit, though, this has got to be the messiest project I've ever done. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we've got that there. We want that right there. Nice. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So... Now I'm just going to sort of press this all in like I do when I do all of my tins and see if I've got, like I've got a couple of spots maybe where the E6000 didn't get in there quite thick enough so that I can go back behind the chain and put some more E6000 on there and press it back down. And that way I can be assured that this is not going to come off. It's always good to go back and check your your chain to make sure it's stuck down. Wow, you guys, I'm super happy with the way this looks. I am so excited. 
I think this was an awesome idea. I don't come up with great awesome ideas all that often. Not like this, like where it's totally different, but this I am super duper happy with. Only part that really stinks is I've got glue stuck all over me because I couldn't take a break to wipe my fingers as I was going. Okay, that's all right. We're all right. And then I want a little more bling in here. Not there. I'm thinking maybe right, right there it would be a good spot for another little bit of bling. Or do we want clear rhinestones? Ooh, we'll put this one right here. That looks really nice. And this, again, this is another piece of bling that I got from um, Kiki's. I love these because these are great bits that you can use in just about any project to add just that little extra bling that you're looking for without going too crazy. And let's see. I do like this rose and I'm thinking it might actually look pretty just coming off the side of the shoe like that. I think it really does. It adds a little touch of um, metal in there, a little that little element, but it also it fits perfectly right there. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad that did that because I'm going to get this under there and press it down really well and get that to stick. I know this is a long uh, video, you guys, but I just really, really, really hope it's worth it in the long run. So hold on just a minute, you guys. Just got to close my door for a minute. All right. Hopefully I didn't lose my flower in the process. <laughs> okay. Um, that and then I had something else I was going to do. Now I forgot. Uh-oh. What was I going to do? Um, oh, I know, I know. We need to get our stickles out. And we need to add those to our flowers because they need it. They need stickles. Okay, so let's get some stickles on here. And then I will let you guys see how beautiful this whole thing is. We'll do a little modeling show. Definitely needs its stickles. Okay. Okay, can you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm just adding the stickles to the tips of the roses here, the tips of the petals. And it's going to go on all of the red roses. Because who could have ruby red slippers without sparkle everywhere? 
So I think that's important on this piece. And I hope you guys, I, I know there may be some people that don't like this idea, and that's okay too. But this is my sort of modern take on, I was just trying to do something different than what I always do. And this was kind of my modern take on the ruby red slipper and a movie that I adore. I just have always, always loved the movie. And it makes me think of my mom. Especially now when I when I think about this movie. It just it makes me think of my me and my mom when I was a kid sitting in front of the TV eating a Hershey bar and watching The Wizard of Oz. Because that's kind of what we used to do. So yeah, we ha always had a really good time watching that movie and it just it, the, it was so magical and the ending was so amazing I mean I used to cry when I watched it when I was a kid because through a lot of the movie it was actually very sad for me but that happy ending took all the sadness away and um, made me you know believe in in all the magical stuff that was going on in the movie and everything so yeah I loved it and again the Tin Man my favorite so sorry you guys my husband's in there talking on the phone and he doesn't talk very quietly so I'm trying to get this done as quickly as I can and just note, you guys, I will be um, putting pictures up at the back end of this video so you can uh, see the pictures um, there and you'll be able to get some close-up views of it. And um, I'm really, really pleased with this project and how it came out and I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And... Um, on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful evening and uh, a great week ahead. Um, thanks again for watching. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get notified when I do future videos. Um, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you so much. And um, once I hit that 7,000 subscriber mark, we'll be doing another giveaway on the channel. Um, but we're going to wait until I hit that 7,000 mark, um, which is not too far off. Um, and like I said, I was moving real, real quickly towards that number. And I think, I don't know if monetizing changed that or not, but hopefully not. Um, maybe I'm just, every once in a while, um, when you are a YouTuber, you go through those little slowdowns. And I'm hoping that's all it is and that it's going to pick back up um, soon. So, um, so that I can get to that 7,000 mark and then start working towards a goal of 8,000. <laughs> That'll be my next goal. So anyway, um, that's what I'm hoping for. And I appreciate you guys. And I hope that, you know, that you will consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed and, um, keeping in touch and watching my future videos. Take a look at my Etsy shop. Um, this shoe will be going in there um, at some point. I, I don't know if it's going to go in right away, but it will be going in there um, for a purchase. And um, I just hope you guys really enjoyed this as much as I did. I am super duper excited about this. <laughs> so um, let me just... I'm going to pick it up a little bit so that I can just kind of really give you guys the full-on view. So there's all of its splendor. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. And this is the little bling I put on the side to kind of keep that chain kind of in one line. Did the same thing on the other side. I got some glue stretched across down here. I did the same thing on the other side. Let me show you that side. 
right there. So that's what it looks like, you guys. It's it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I couldn't be happier about the way this turned out. Um, and I'm glad you guys came along on this journey with me because it was a fun one. So anyway, please make some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys thought this was a fun video and if you'd like to see more like this, maybe do another shoe in another style. Maybe we'll do it as a uh, bouquet uh, thing. Um, I've seen some of those and those are really, really gorgeous as well. And um, just let me know what you think. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll do another one in a little bit different style. So thanks so much, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Sunday afternoon and a great week ahead. And God bless you all. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned for pictures at the back end. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.